Hi, my name is Margret. In this video, I want to introduce you to the switch statement. The switch statement is a multiple selection statement. I want to contrast it with the single selection and double selection statement. In my single selection statement, I either perform an action or not. In Java, the single selection statement is implemented with an if statement. In a double selection statement, I either perform one action or another. In Java, the double selection statement is implemented with an if else statement. In a multiple selection statement, I have different choices and depending on my choices, different actions are performed. In Java, the multiple selection statement is implemented as a switch statement. Let's look at an example. Here I have a variable, an integer variable, called grade. And if my grade is 9, then I print freshman. Else, if my grade is 10, I print sophomore. Else, if my grade is 11, I print junior. 12, I print senior. If none of the above was the case, then I have a default, I just print student. Notice I have one variable, could also be an expression, result of a method call that can take on different values. You know, for these different cases, I have different response. I can also have a default with a default response. Java provides a special syntax for this situation. Here you can see it as a switch statement. Notice the keyword switch. Here I provide a variable or expression, etc., that can take on different values. And here I provide a number of different cases where I describe the different values I'm interested in. So I say, well, if my grade happens to be 9, in that case, print freshman. If my grade happens to be 10, in that case, print sophomore. If my grade happens to be 11, in that case, print junior. 12, in that case, print senior. Default, in that case, print student. Note that we have the keyword break and there are no braces for each of my cases. So if I use an if-else statement for double selection, I have code blocks that include the different code statements that should be executed for each of my different selection branches. We don't do that in switch. In my situation, it's only a single statement with a break, but there could be multiple statements and still no braces. We use the keyword break to indicate that we are done with our execution. Let's look at the entry points. Here you can see we can have different entry points. Those are my case labels or my default. That's where I start my execution. We have different exit points. The exit points are my break statements or whenever I've reached the end of my switch. That's also when I'm done. Java has something called falling through. This means I keep executing until I reach an exit point. Could be a break statement or the end of my switch statement. Notice that I commented out one of the breaks here. So let's pretend my grade happens to be 10. If my grade is 10, I'm finding my appropriate entry point that would be right here with case 10. And I would start executing system out print line sophomore. There's no break statement because we commented it out. So I keep continuing. This is I'm falling through to the next case level because there was no exit point in between. I continue to print out junior. 
Now at this point, I hit the break statement. Break is my exit point. At that point, I'm done. So in this particular situation, if my grade is 10, I would print both sophomore and junior. Let's look at an example in code. Now I'm going to write a short demo program that checks the value of a variable of type character. So here is my variable of type character, I just call it C. I assign it a value, let's say H. And I say switch C, which means we are checking for the value of C. And now we're considering a number of different cases. In case it is H, system out print hello. Break. In case it is T, system out print this. In case W, system out print works. Let's make another break here. And let's ha also have a default level. If none of the above was the case, then we just say system out print have a great day. Default. So let's compile and run and it says hello here my c gets assigned the character h i'm checking i say what is my entry point it's the case h so i'm printing hello i hit my exit point break i'm done let's see what happens if i say t now my value of c is t i'm checking for my entry point it's not h but yes, it's T. I'm executing this. I'm also executing works because we have a fall through and I hit a break. Break is my exit point. I'm done. Let's see what happens if I have W. I'm looking for my entry point. It's not H, it's not T, it's W. So I print works, I hit my break, I'm done. You can see works down here. Maybe if I have something totally different like for example X. So I'm going to compile, run. Now I'm comparing my character C. It's not H, it's not T, it's not W, it's something else. None of the above. So I'm printing have a great day. There's no break at this point, but I continue until I reach the end of my switch statement. That is also an exit point. So at this point, I'm done. I want to point out some differences between nested if-else statements and switch statements, and when to choose one over the other. If you need to perform different actions based on certain ranges of values, then nested if statements are a great choice. That is the case because switch statements don't work with ranges of values. Switch statements work with discrete values. If you need to perform different actions based on multiple separate discrete values, that is when switch statements can be a great choice. However, some restrictions apply. Switch statements only work if the variable or the expression you compare against is of type byte, short, character, or integer. It could also be one of the corresponding wrapper classes, byte, short, character, or integer. Could be an enum or could be a string. A little bit about a break statement. The break statement can be executed in loops, while, for, do while, or in switch statements. Break causes an immediate exit from the control statement, and the execution continues 
with the first statement after the loop or after my switch statement. It is commonly used inside switch to skip the remainder of the switch. It is also sometimes used to escape early from a loop. Now here a little caveat, use that sparingly because it can quite easily affect the clarity and readability of your code. There's also a special keyword called continue. The continue statement can be executed in loops only. That means while, for, or do while. The statements in the loop body that follow the continue statement are skipped. In a while or do while loop, execution continues with the evaluation of the loop continuation test which is the loop continuation condition. In a for statement, execution continues with the increment expression, and then the program evaluates the loop continuation test. Now it is your turn. Look at this switch statement. Assume that the variable q has the value 3 what is going to be the output produced by the execution of this switch statement pause the video when you're ready press continue so notice the output is three what happens is the following we're entering the switch statement q is three we are looking for the entry point not one not two it is three so we're printing three and we're hitting a break statement, which takes us out of the loop because break is an exit point. Here is another challenge. What is the output produced if my variable Q is four? Pause the video. When you're ready, press continue. Notice the output is 4, 5, default, in three separate lines. What happens is the following. We enter the switch statement with Q being 4. We look for our entry point, not 1, not 2, not 3, but here it is 4. We're printing 4, print line, so we print 4 with a new line. We fall through to the next case because there was no break. We print 5 with a new line. We keep falling through the default case because once again there was no break. We print default and here we hit the end of our switch statement. This of course is an exit point and we're done. Look at this switch statement. It is slightly different than the one before. Once again, we are using an integer variable q, but we have different print statements this time. And I'm wondering, which values of q will print out banana? Take a moment, pause the video, and when you're ready, press continue. It's a number three. If q was one, I would print apple and I was gone. If it was 2, I would print orange, I would be gone. Now that my Q is 3, I actually print banana. I hit the break statement, this is it. One last challenge. Which values of Q print out Kiwi? Take a moment, pause the video, when you're ready, press Continue. So here we have a number of different possibilities. I could have the value 4. If I have my value 4, I would start right here. I would print pear and fall through to grapes and fall through to kiwi. And so I would print pear, grapes, and also kiwi. 
Now, if my Q was 5, I would start right here in case 5. I would print grapes and I would also print kiwi. So here you can see output is grapes kiwi. And if my value is anything less than 1 or greater 5, not 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, but anything else, then I just print kiwi. So you can see kiwi.